All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Long, and I'm one of the judges of the 27th Judicial Circuit in Pulaski County. And I want to welcome each and every one of you to this extraordinary day. This is an awesome and extraordinary day. We have eight graduates of our drug court, which is fantastic. And I appreciate every one of you coming. This is, this is uh, I can't tell you how difficult it is to get through drug court like this. And, and we've, got, we've got a great group today. Uh, I want to introduce other uh, special guests. Shane Clem with Senator Mark Warner's office. That's Shane. And Chris Hurst, our 12th district of, a member of the Virginia House of Delegates, there too. Uh, Laura Blevins with Senator Tim Kane's office. Yes, hi Laura. <laughs> okay, and uh, Cody Mumpower and John Bieber with Morgan Congress. Why? Is she here too? No, just you. Just me. Okay, all right. And uh, John. He's, it's, he's with uh, Congressman Morgan Griffith's office. And then Anna Powers behind me is uh, the drug court coordinator for the Supreme Court of Virginia. And this is a great lady. She does so much for drug courts in the state, it's unbelievable. And she's very nice, too. Uh, <laughs> working down there in that Supreme Court building. Now I got in trouble. Anyway, Charles Bopp with the Pulaski Board of Supervisors. Good to have you, Mr. Bopp. Joe Guth Guthrie with the uh, Board of Supervisors. Good to have you, Mr. Guthrie. Jonathan Sweet, the uh, County Administrator for Pulaski County. Jonathan, how are you doing? James Pritchard, the exec Executive Director of the uh, New River Valley Community Services. And he runs a great operation. He's a good person. And if it weren't for Wendy's and James Pritchard, we probably wouldn't have this drug for him. And he can tell you about that. Uh, Doug Urban, who's the chief uh, of our 27th uh, uh, probation, 28th uh, district probation. Where's Doug? Oh, okay. Okay, Doug's here. Doug's done a great job. And then Randy Mantney. Is Randy here? I didn't see you. How is that? Moreover, I didn't hear you. But I, 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 That's the first judge. No, no, great to have you, Randy. I appreciate it. I, I've got your name coming up here, so don't worry. So I was nice then. So. Anyway, uh, Mike Fleener, Commons Attorney for Pulaski County. Mike, there. good to have you, Mike. Thank you. Lieutenant Parmley with the Pulaski uh, 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 Police Department. Okay, good, good to have you, sir. Uh, and uh, Pat Huber, President of New River Valley Community College. New River, uh, is Huber? Is she here? There you are. Okay, I saw I looked right at you, and I can't see anyway, so that's it. Uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Bobby Turk, a circuit judge in our 27th Circuit, so back there. And beside him is uh, Bradley Finch, who's a uh, circuit court judge here in Pulaski County. And then behind me is, I, I don't know if I could call you Jack or Chip. It's a honorable <coughs> Chip uh, Hurley, who's a uh, circuit judge in uh, Tazewell County. And uh, he's gonna be our speaker today and you'll learn more about him. But he's done a tremendous amount for drug courts in the state, as well, our region, as well as the whole country. He, he does it a lot, he's, he is a workhorse. But uh, thank you uh, people for coming. Uh, before we get into the, the rest of the program, I want to introduce our drug court team, which I, we have a great drug court team. We've got a collaboration of the different facets of Pulaski County and our New River Valley, and we all work together exceptionally well, I think. And it's just been great uh, working with this team, and, and um, uh, it's, it's, uh, sometimes we don't always agree, but we always come to a, a resolution. Uh, Skip Swab, who's an assistant Collins attorney here, and right, Skip's here. Uh, Ricky Jensen with the Public Defender's Office, he's here. Uh, uh, Dana Dow, who's behind me, she's wonderful. She does a great job in, in coordinating all this. She's made for this job. Mark Serber, who watches, keeps track of everybody. Uh, Robbie Smith, who's Rob? Okay. <laughs> Have to get over there, you're usually over there. Robbie does a great job helping us with, with the uh, a drug court. He keeps everybody straight and keeps us informed. Uh, Anthony Akers, the Assistant County Administrator here with Jackson County. Anthony is a wonderful person too. Y'all, you're lucky to have him. He's a special man, and I can't say it any plainer. Uh, uh, Glenn Matthews with Community Services. Glenn does a great job. He's very he's running of the, uh, the treatment programs. He's very informed, very knowledgeable, and he's a very integral part of our community services here in the New River Valley. And uh, you know, I'm kind of naive most of the time, which is a good thing in life, I think, is to be naive. But, you know, I went to a forum about a year ago, and there are all these people there. I mean, there are probably three or four hundred people. And all of a sudden, I, they all work for community services. And, you know, how many employees do you have? Eight or nine? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Do you know, did anybody know the community services? That's unbelievable. 
and it's, it's, it's just wonderful that we got them. And they're, they're, they're the best. They, they, they do such a great job uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure who the bottom is, but James is the top. Uh, Heather Armstrong, who is our case manager. Heather? Why don't y'all keep coming? Okay. Uh, she, she does a great job, great personality for this, and very thorough. Kristen Stewart, a peer a review specialist. Yes, where's Kristen? Okay, over there. Okay, uh, you, why, not, why are you not back there with them? Okay. Uh, and Laurie Trail, who is our drug court uh, coordinator for our uh, community service board. And Laurie is something. She, I, I often think there are three of her. And she tells me they're not triplets, it's just one. But she does so much and has been such a great uh, uh, proponent of the drug courts, done a tremendous amount of work. And she's done uh, as much as anybody in the state of Virginia uh, getting drug courts. She's helped and almost single-handedly got these things off the ground, along with Anna Powers and the great assistance, six of the drug courts uh, in this area. And so that's, that's a lot. And I don't know anybody else in the state. I definitely don't have them. Anyway, Laurie's wonderful and she's helped everything. Now, I'm, um, and I think we need to give an applause to our dignitaries. And we will hit the okay. All right. Let's see, she keeps me straight. Uh, Deborah, pa pa Deborah's here. Have you been here? <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Okay. And uh, Megan, she's right there. I saw her. Sorry, I don't know how I skipped over your name. <laughs> but anyway, see, it's good to be naive. But they do both do a great job with their input provide a valuable source to our team and uh, we have a wonderful wonderful team okay who else anybody else I'll figure out. No. Got everybody. okay now we'll get to our, our speaker in the introduction of the rest of the program thank you judge long um, it is indeed a privilege to stand here in front of y'all each year I appreciate the opportunity you have and let me say a few brief remarks on behalf of the county and then I'll introduce our keynote speaker. But I speak uh, with our two board members that are here, as well as our county administrator, Doc and Sweet, that it is an honor and a privilege to support this program through the county of Pulaski. And more importantly, not only do we know the benefits of a program like this saving money, but ultimately it saves lives and transforms lives. And we see that happening as each drug court as years go by and during the graduation. So on behalf of our Board of Supervisors, our County Administrator, the County of Pulaski counts it an honor and a privilege to invest and allow uh, folks like me to invest our time into a program that's a part of changing lives. So we thank you for that opportunity we have. With that said, I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable Judge Jack <coughs> S. Chip Hurley, Jr. Judge Hurley was elected to the bench in 2005. He served as a Virginia General District Court Judge in the 29th Judicial District sitting in Tazewell, Russell, Buchanan, Dickinson Counties from 2005 to 2012. In 2012, he was appointed to the Circuit Court for the 29th Judicial Circuit and sits primarily in Tazewell, Virginia. Judge Hurley presides over the Tazewell County Drug Court and serves on the Virginia State Drug Treatment Court Advisory Committee where he serves at, as vice chairman, second to the chief of justice. He's an adjunct professor at Appalachian School of Law in Grundy, Virginia. Judge Hurley is a graduate of Davidson College in 1983 with a degree in political science. He graduated from the University of Richmond T.C. Williams School of Law in 1986. Prior to taking the bench, Judge Hurley had a general law practice for 19 years with a focus on real estate and criminal defense. He resides in Bluefield, Virginia with his wife, Julie. It's my distinct honor to introduce to you the Honorable Judge Jack S. Chip Hurley, Jr. Thank you. May it please the court. Uh, it is an honor to be here. Graduation, most of what we do in circuit court is not really something that we would say is something to celebrate, right? At least folks that come in here, uh, unless you're coming in here for an adoption or a drug court graduation, that's usually a difficult time, uh, unless maybe you really want your divorce. I, I guess that could happen. <laughs> um, so 
this is a special time and I must admit this is the first graduation I've ever attended with eight graduates so uh, I am I'm excited just to be a part of this uh, it is a it's a huge thing um, what I want to tell you a little bit about is what you all are a part of um, nationwide drug courts have served 1.5 million people in our country we're dealing in the midst of an opioid epidemic unlike anything we've ever seen. Uh, we have people dying of an accidental overdose, you know, approximately every nine minutes. That's like a 747 full of people crashing every week. If that were happening, we'd ground all our jets. We had two 737 Maxes crashed within a year and we grounded them all, right? So that's, that's what we have. And the strange thing about the opioid epidemic is you know, it's the nature of the, of the opioids that kill you. Why, why people are dying so badly is, and so quickly is it what it does to your body. It slows your heart rate down. It slows your respiration down. You stop breathing. Your heart stops and someone finds you the next day. It's not something that's not like these are attempted suicides. These are the nature of these strong narcotics that, that, that what it has on your system is it just slows it down and you die. You know, we've been very fortunate to have Narcan now and I know most of our officers carry that now. We've had a bunch of reversals. That's probably the primary reason and last year for the first time we're going to see a decrease in the number of deaths it looks like. I haven't gotten the final numbers together yet. But there have been more overdoses, we've just had more reversals. This is an ep epidemic unlike anything we've ever seen. Back in the 60s, when heroin came through and you had the hippie movement, y'all don't remember that, I, know. <laughs> I remember that. Some of you all in here may have remembered Woodstock, right? Yeah. The, the issue with the hippie movement and that, that generation was they wanted to be away from society. They kind of pulled themselves away from society and it was easy for the mainstream society to kind of turn their back on them and say, you know, they, they want to be separate and apart, we're just going to kind of let them do their thing. Um, but today, this epidemic is hitting all generations, all socioeconomic walks of life. It's your brothers and sisters, your moms and dads, your children mostly, your grandchildren. It affects everybody. Um, I rarely meet someone and have a conversation with them and find someone that does not have anyone in their family or a family member of an extremely close friend that hasn't battled with an addiction, a drug addiction. Um, but I don't want you to feel bad about yourselves either. You know, this stigma that's been with, uh, with addiction for way too long, it's time to shed it. And you get a chance at graduation to shed it like nothing else. Um, you know, if you had cancer and you'd been undergoing chemo, nobody would say, you know, they brought that on themselves. But that's what a lot of society says about substance use disorders. The truth of the matter is, I believed that too, 10 years ago. I thought, yeah, we need to get them help, but you know, they won't stop using. You have to follow the signs. If any of you have dealt with an addiction for longer than a year, and we took you into a hospital and did a PET scan of your brain, your frontal lobes are the two front parts. That's where you think. That's where you make all your decisions. The back part, that's all the love, all that stuff. Anger, all that. But the frontal lobe, that's what you make your decision with. And you know what happens when you're addicted for more than a year? The activity in your frontal lobe reduces by half or better. So they're operating on half or less of the brain power that a normal person, a non-addicted person is dealing with. And we wonder why they make bad decisions. They're truly handicapped. It is, when you see the, the science and the medical behind it, all of a sudden you look at it differently. Because it doesn't matter whether they took their first uh, opioid is a prescription because they broke their leg playing football or if they were in a car wreck or 
if they took it on the street or stole it from their parents' medicine cabinet. Once they get there, their body is changed, their brain is affected, and we have to treat it. If we don't treat the brain, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have any better results. We can't incarcerate our way out of this. I used to think we could do that. Virginia's pretty good at building prisons. We've got a lot of them. You know what it costs to house a prisoner today? $27,000 a year per prisoner. Even if we could build enough prisons, I don't think we, we'd bankrupt ourselves trying to do it if every time somebody popped positive on a screen, we locked them up for three years. We couldn't afford it. And they wouldn't be any better off when they came out. So you need to shed, and, you know, if you feel bad about the way you, if you feel like someone's looking at you because you dealt with an addiction problem, you need to let, you need to, you need to laugh that off. You had a very serious medical condition, a substance use disorder. I'm not very good about being politically correct either. And all these new words they keep throwing at me. I'm, I'm doing better though, Andy. You're teaching. <laughs> but you need to know you had a major medical issue and you've overcome it. You're in long term recovery. Now, sustaining that is one day at a time. I wish I could tell you that once you're cured, you know. It's like you know, you, a dose of penicillin and you're done. It's not like that with this. You're one day away from being right back in the middle of it, okay? But you are, you're, if, once you have been sober and been uh, free of these substances for a year and a half or two years, your brain is an amazing organ. It will re, it'll rebuild. And you'll get back to 95 to 98% activity in your brain. So, so there is great hope. There's great hope in this. So I'm excited for you all. Um, there are 3,454 drug courts in this country. The key thing about drug courts is if you graduate, the chances of you having another run in with the law is reduced 58%. Recidivism is cut by 58% over going to jail and being on probation. Business as usual. That's huge. That's huge. Um, you all know what you've done. I used to think drug courts were kind of an opportunity, you know, to kind of slide people by and you know, kind of soft on crime. Nobody, I've been around Judge Long since he was first sworn in in 2005. I have yet to hear a single person say, Judge Long's pretty soft on crime. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that? I've never heard that, okay? Um, and it takes a while to understand. You all know better than anybody. And you all need to be our ambassadors. You need to let folks in, in the community and folks you come in contact with and the people you work with know that drug court is anything but soft on crime. The, the folks in drug court in Tazewell County tell me, it would have been a lot easier if I just did my time. <laughs> I mean, it would be easier, but you wouldn't be at the same place. Look where you were the day you entered into in the drug court. I think what I need to do is start taking a picture of folks the day they come into drug court because I can see the transition. It is a transformation between the day they come in and the day they graduate. Um, and I see these, I, I love these pictures too. They're a lot, I'm learning a lot today too. I'm gonna take back with me. Um, you all have come a long way, but it's been a tremendous effort. A tremendous effort. Um, you all have made a decision to put recovery first in your life. Um, the hard part about that is a lot of relationships you've been in over the years had to end or, or change. Because if I know what your three best friends are doing, I got a pretty good idea what you're doing. So if you're hanging out with three people that are using all the time, you may you may be strong for a month or three months, but eventually the temptation will be too great and you'll use and you'll be back in the same cycle. So it is there are difficult life changing things that have to happen. But you all have done that. You, you're you're here. Um, you all are going to graduate today. 
um, with families reunited, with jobs, with how many of you have gotten your driver's license while you've been in drug court? How about that? You know, my, my nephew lives in Philadelphia, and you really don't have to have a driver's license in Philadelphia. You either take the train or the bus wherever you're going, or the little subway thing they've got. Um, you really, you can have a job and do everything you want to do without a driver's license. Try having a job in Pulaski without a driver's license, right? I mean, it, it's a huge thing. Getting your license back is a huge start. Now, I'll also say take care of them, right? You've been without them before. Take care of your, your license. It's a, it is a ticket. It, it is part of your ticket out. Um, so uh, what I want you all to understand in all of this is that you People will look to you when they consider how important is drug court to Pulaski County. You've got the, with the administration here in the county, um, it's a, it is a dollar savings. For every person that makes it through drug court, you're paying about $9,000 a year. In fact, you all probably aren't stomaching that. It's coming through either the state or federal grants, as opposed to paying out, if anyone's spending less than three years, you all are paying the jail cost on that, which is what, 18 or 19,000 local jail costs. So it's a huge savings. Uh, you all, eight times $27,000 a year, you all can see what you save the county by being in drug court. But it's not just about those cost savings. We've had 13 drug free babies born in Tazewell in the last seven and a half years since I've been in drug court judge. How do you put a price on that? Have you ever seen a video of a NAS baby? an addicted baby. If you haven't, I challenge you to go online and look at it. It's, it's hard and you probably won't watch it for long. I challenge you to do that. It's one of the most terrifying sights that I've ever looked at. But when you hold a baby that isn't addicted, that doesn't need forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of medical treatment for the first six weeks, it is, how do you put a price tag, lifetime on that? All right. So it is, you're a part of that. You're a part of the story of drug court in Pulaski County and in Virginia. Um, you be our ambassadors out there because the support of drug court depends on you all telling your story and, um, and living with all of the lessons you've learned. Did you all go through MRT? Go through MRT? Yeah. That's a tough class too. But I hope you learned some things. Take those lessons with you. Okay. Um, we're very fortunate for the first, good grief, uh, well until four or five years ago, we had 14 drug courts in Virginia that got state funding. Everybody else just kind of volunteered their time and localities would throw a little bit of money at them and uh, we'd get federal grants when we could. Usually they would run for three years and maybe you could extend them a fourth year. Um, I am very, very pleased to let you know today that s sustainability for drug courts, particularly in Southwest Virginia, have, has now been established. Uh, with the new budget, um, drug court budget that was approved by the Supreme Court, uh, the following counties now have state funding that will go on, I guess until the General Assembly cuts all the funding off, which I don't think anyone's gonna do, but. Um, we have uh, Lee Scott and Wise County has been added. Um, we have um, we have Tazewell County, Franklin County, City of Bristol, Buchanan County, Dickinson County, Russell County, um, Washington County, Pulaski County, Floyd County, Giles County. Um, Montgomery County, City of Radford. Um, this is this is huge. It means that our folks in Southwest and in the New River Valley are going to have the opportunity for drug courts to affect their communities uh, for many, many years to come. And you know, we look at eight graduates, and that's a huge number. I've never, like I said, I've never attended a eight person, a graduate, uh, drug court graduation. 
But you know, when you look at the population of Pulaski County, which is 35,000. How many? 35,000. 35, <laughs> you go, well, that's just eight. But let's think about it. You have eight graduates, and these graduates, how many of you have children? Okay. How many of you have parents that are still living? Any of you have grandparents still living? Brothers and sisters? And, uh, co workers at, at work? Okay. The sphere of influence of the people that are affected by what happens to these eight people is probably 40 to 60 people. So all of a sudden, rather than just eight, you're dealing with, let's say, eight times 50, you're dealing with 400 people that are affected by whether they're at work or whether they're in prison. Whether they're having to take care of their kids, somebody's going to have to take care of them. Is it the county? Is it a family member? So instead of eight out of 35,000, we're dealing with 400 people that are affected by this graduation in all likelihood. So it is affecting your community in, in a great way. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, celebration of eight is an awesome thing. And you all have the challenge of going out, being the ambassadors, and doing extraordinarily well, as you've done for the last year to two years, however long it's taken each of you. It's different for each of you, I know. So, anybody been in longer than two years? All right, there you go. <laughs> we, we had one in Tazewell that it took three years and nine months. And every time graduation came up, I said, it, can't we graduate her yet? So, it's okay. You're there. And that's you. So, I wish you all well. I, I know you can do well. You've proven it to yourselves. For the first time probably in many years, you have a confidence you've not had. So, go out there every day. Put a smile on your face because you are not the same person you were when you entered drug court. And number two, you're not in jail. So make the most of that second opportunity. I congratulate you, and I am thrilled to be here and be a part of this. Thank you. coordinator and I'm going to echo a little bit of what um, Judge Hurley just talked about. Um, we are, this is exciting for us, we've never had eight graduates so it's a, a big day. We're happy for all of the special people who are graduating today and all the hard work that they've uh, put in to be in here. Um, they've each had their individual journeys, it has taken some longer than others, um, but they've all been able to demonstrate an ability to sustain uh, recovery for a significant period of time. And we do want to you know, say that when we have drug court graduations, we're by no means saying that we've <coughs> cured people's addiction and that that's not something um, that, that we stand here and say today. But I do believe that we have, the graduates have learned and gained the skills and the tools necessary to be able to live in, to live in recovery. Um, and I think that they are proof that recovery is possible. So we are very excited for them. Um, again, as Judge Hurley said, some think that drug court is easy. Um, it is not easy. And so for all of the folks sitting here, what they've accomplished has been um, not easy and very hard. They have completed um, and progressed their way, again, at different paces through five phases of our program. Um, they have, are required to obtain or maintain their employment. They are required to complete 100 hours of community service to participate in a giving back project so that they can be a positive part of the community. Um, they've made a lot of positive community co connections while they've been in the program. They've participated in treatment and self-help meetings. Um, and so, again, we have graduates who have obtained their driver's license, who've obtained their GED since being in the program, who have uh, been able to purchase vehicles, have stable housing now. So a lot of accomplishments here today. Um, so we're going to call them up one by one, recognize them, and give them an opportunity to say whatever they want to say. And then um, we will uh, start with William Reed. <laughs> Mr. Rook, William um, Billy uh, completed 110 hours of community service while he's been in the program. He also participated in a giving back project where he partnered with our 401 Peer Center with a other group of graduates uh, where they gathered donated items to uh, put together care packets for the homeless um, in the community. And so 
I'm going to give, um, I think, you know, William has made huge strides in terms of where he was when he came in. Like, it is not his favorite thing to do. But he's remarkable when he does speak and what he has to say. So we appreciate him doing that for us briefly. Oh. <laughs> I'd just like to say everybody sitting up here that had anything to do with uh, me getting into this program or uh, helping me along. Uh, gosh, I really appreciate you all. Uh, you know, my life has been changed. All of you had a hand in it more than one way or anyway. But anyway, I, I just really, I found it educational and uh, life changing. And uh, that's what I like about it, is the life change more. So that's about all I got to say. <laughs> scariest thing I've ever had to do in my life and then I go to jail and I get this opportunity to come in here with these wonderful people that believed in me and I never thought I could make it but if it wasn't for drug court and my family I'd be dead and I just want to say thank y'all for believing in us when we couldn't believe in ourselves say that I'm grateful for this opportunity um, without this opportunity I'd probably be dead somewhere and um, I just want to thank everybody for helping me because it wasn't easy <laughs> by no means and uh, I, I'm just grateful for everything thank you Where is TD? 
because that's what we call her. But um, TD, again, has been a pleasure to work with. She's done, I think, from where she was at the beginning to where TD is now is uh, vastly different. She's <laughs> completed 100 hours of community service. Uh, she also participated in the Giving Back Project for the 401 Peer Center and uh, to benefit the homeless individuals. And I'm going to give TD an opportunity to speak. <laughs> God, I'm glad my son is here. You know, but um, I'm very thankful for y'all. Like, where I was at when I first came in this program, boy, I fought these people tooth and nail time. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably the only one in here that really tried these people, for real. You know, but they stood by me, and they just, it makes me feel good to know that there's really people out here that really care for us, and that's not going to turn their back on us. There she is. I love that lady. I, she is like my angel, Paul. But um, just Lori and Miss Heather really, y'all really just did the most. And I'm very grateful for y'all. And Jerk Court is not easy by far. It's not. But they don't give up on you. And I've always had people give up. <laughs> But they did. I'm really grateful for y'all. And God knows where I was at when I came in the program. I was not in a good place. I think y'all, like, y'all really stood by me, like, through all the deaths. You know? And the biggest one was my husband. That was my biggest hurdle. He was right there with me the whole time. I love you for that, and I really don't want to leave, but I do want to leave, you know? <laughs> I am scared, you know, because this is a very scary world to be in. And well, I just got thank you and you too, Miss Sam. And God knows you too, Justin. <laughs> oh, I tried to do before I did, but thank you for not throwing the battle at me. <laughs> thank you. Thank y'all. Project, he assisted in creating a labyrinth for those in recovery to use to meditate. Um, and I just want to give him an opportunity to talk a little bit about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I'd just like to say I was grateful to have had the opportunity. Uh, and I don't know where I would be without this program. Uh, it's, it's great how something so positive can come out of. Uh, something bad, uh, but I'd just like to thank everybody involved. She's also uh, participated in the Giving Back Project with the 401 Peer Center to benefit homeless individuals. Um, again, I don't think she loves this whole speaking piece, but we're going to give her an opportunity to say anything that she might want to say. I just want to thank y'all for all y'all's support, for being there for all of us. It's been a good opportunity. Thank y'all. Thank you. 
Brian has been um, has done a wonderful job in drug court. It's always a pleasure to work with. Um, he's had a lot of accomplishments, but to name a couple, he's completed 102 hours of community service since he's been with our, our program. He also um, did a giving back project for United Methodist Church of Dublin, where he repaired the children's playground there so that the kids could benefit from that again. Um, and I'm going to give Brian an opportunity to speak a little bit. Well, this is definitely a life-changing experience. Uh, I know I couldn't have done it without the accountability and uh, my self-help meetings and or Heather, Dana, as well, the rest of the drug court team. Executive Director for Newburgh Valley Community Services to come up and help us with the presentation. Well, indeed, it is a very special day because of all the graduates. So I'm happy for you guys for the accomplishments that you've made. Um, none of them would have been achievable without this man. Um, we are here today to celebrate your graduation, but we're also here to celebrate. I'm a little nervous because he is a judge and he can lock me up. And this is probably a surprise. But with that said, he has done more for those struggling with substance use disorders in our area than anybody I know. He's done more for people individually. He's done more for people like me working in organizations trying to make a difference. He's done more for our communities and trying to reduce incarceration. And more importantly, trying to make sure people got the help they needed. There's many times that I would look at my phone and look down at this Judge Long. And I'm thinking, what does he want? <laughs> because he usually wants to talk about an issue in a way that leads to a solution. And he wants to know what can we do? How can we address it? I have worked harder for Judge Long than maybe some people in drug court. <laughs> and it's been a pleasure because he shares the same passion I do. He shares the same passion that most of us do. We want people to get help. We, don't, we want to break that cycle. And he's worked tirelessly, tirelessly over the last, I'm gonna say, five years. And without him, none of this would be possible. I remember the day when we started the drug court here in Kalaski, it was in 2014. We had two individuals in drug court at that time. We had two, and we might have had maybe six or seven people in the courtroom at that time. Look at where we are. Look at where we are. It's a reflection of his dedication, his passion, his work ethic, and how he really wants to make sure that communities do whatever they can to support individuals in need. It's been an honor and a pleasure, and sometimes overwhelming, to work with him. Uh, but he's exactly what we needed when we needed it. We were looking for a champion. I was looking for a champion to help us combat the issues of substance use in our community. And it was just a happenstance encounter. As most of you have heard him talk before, and if not, you will later today, I'm sure, we met at Wendy's over lunch. I was eating there by myself, minding my own business. And he walks up and says, what are we gonna do? I wish I had saved the notes that I took on that napkin that day, because this is what it's evolved to, or evolved into. We are very fortunate. We are here to celebrate him as much as we are here to celebrate the graduates. He is taking a step back from 
Chalasky Drug Court. He's not stepping completely out of drug courts in the New River Valley, but Pulaski's the first one he's stepping out of as he prepares to retire. Lori Trail and I talk about this constantly. We're a little scared uh, about drug courts when he retires because he has been such a driving force. And we're scared that he's gonna have all this vacant time to call us. <laughs> <laughs> But with that said, we're here to celebrate him, and we have a very important, uh, I guess, speaker who's going to deliver a message. Uh, unfortunately, he could not be with us, so we have it uh, ready to play. So I'll turn it over to Mike and I'll get started. Fingers crossed. Hey, everybody. Senator Tim Kaine here and I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today in person. I want to extend my congratulations to today's graduates of the Pulaski County Adult Drug Court. This is a really exciting day, and when I have the chance, I love to go to these graduations. I've been to them in Roanoke County and recently in Wise County, and I wish I could be with you today. You know, one of our fundamental values must be that everybody deserves a second chance, and that's what drug courts offer. It's a model that works around Virginia and around the nation, and I'm a proud supporter of drug court programs. Drug court graduations never fail to inspire me because I know today's ceremony represents months of hard work by each of you with support from your loved ones and especially with admirable support from all the many members of the community who work as staff for the drug court programs and community volunteers. I applaud you for your perseverance through the program I'm rooting for your continued success. I also wanted to say a few words to congratulate Judge Marcus Long on his retirement from the court, since I understand that this will be his last drug court graduation. This is so important, and I often talk to judges around the Commonwealth who are involved in drug courts, and they tell me in their careers on the bench, it's been one of the highlights of their lives. Four years ago, I had a meeting in Radford to talk about substance abuse, and Judge Long came and participated in the discussion. He talked with passion about the benefits of drug courts and their ability to serve as an effective alternative to incarceration. I, appreciate, I, I deeply appreciate not only Judge Long's seven years of service on the circuit court bench, but also his previous seven years of service as a judge for the Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court. I commend Judge Long for his leadership in, in establishing the adult drug court in Pulaski, Floyd, Montgomery counties. In 2016, he was recognized as a leader in the law by Virginia Lawyers Weekly, and I know that countless Virginians are grateful for his service. So congratulations to you, Judge Long, on your retirement. Congratulations and thanks for your great public service to the Commonwealth and to the graduates that are here today. And I hope you'll continue to serve as a voice for thoughtful solutions to address substance abuse in all of our communities. Have a great day. As I said earlier, it was a chance encounter, me trying to have a private lunch and get away from the busyness of work, a few moments to myself. Judge Long walks in, Wendy, we sit down and have a conversation. We jot some notes down. It was a chance encounter, right people, right place, right time. I believe that. Judge Long likes to talk a lot about the stars he has, Lori Trail being one of them, Randy Matney being one of them. Um, but without him, we would have not been able to do anything. So we are very fortunate to have him. Um, there are times where he's speaking at um, uh, community functions or even drug court graduations where he goes into the story about Wendy's. You would think that we should get some kind of kickback, maybe. <laughs> I think at one of the meetings he said, you know, great things happen at Wendy's. They do. And it's because of him. Uh, we reached out to Wendy's. <laughs> and they uh, were very I don't know, enthusiastic about what you've done and about this chance encounter and about you always mentioning their, their name. <laughs> so with that said, 
Uh, there's a gift in here from Wendy's, and Glenn is going to read the letter as I get it out for you. This letter is from Frank Leary, a Vice President of Wendy's, to the Honorable Marcus H. Long, Jr. Wendy's commends your remarkable contributions to your region in creating the successful programs in the New River Valley Community Services for Southwest Virginia. We've also heard of your retirement, and Wendy's would like to wish you a very happy retirement as you enter the next chapter of your life. Dave Thomas instilled many core values in the Wendy's company. Some of those values include treat people with respect and give something back. The programs you've developed in your time truly embody those values. With that in mind, it seems so fitting that you have so generously accredited a local Wendy's as the birthplace of these programs. <laughs> Wendy's thanks you for being a great advocate in your community, as well as a great advocate of Wendy's. Please enjoy a token of Wendy's appreciation. And again, Frank Larry, Vice President. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has truly been an inspiration to me, as well as you guys. Uh, he's shown a side to me, as well as you guys, and those who get to know him. He does not uh, represent his nickname of Lock My Bomb. <laughs> he is very compassionate and giving. And with that, I say thank you. Well, I'm honored to have the opportunity to be a small part of this uh, today, um, representing the, the Pulaski County Board of Supervisors, uh, Supervisor Guthrie and Supervisor Bopper here. Um, firstly, let me say again, congratulations to the graduates and to your families. And to let you know, Pulaski County is so very proud of you. Um, I'm supposed to be on the lighter side because we all appreciate Judge Long's uh, sense of humor as dry and unclever as it may be at times. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, clever as it may be at times. Oh, you got it wrong. <laughs> um, so, uh, with that, I'm just going to take a few moments to talk about Judge Long. And uh, many of you know this, or many of you don't know this, but uh, uh, Judge Long and I actually have a few things in common. Uh, one of those things I'll speak about, and it's that our both, both of our last names are actually adjectives that rather describe us. My last name's Sweet, so that's self-explanatory. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you may need some explanation for, and some help with, uh, with Judge Long. So here goes. He has represented the long arm of the law as a circuit court judge since 2012. And some of his sentencing practices during that time could have been considered rather, yes, long. <laughs> Before that, he long served in the court system as a local attorney. He enjoys reading legal briefs and long walks on the beach. He has long since given up on trying to tell Leroy that he's not crazy. <laughs> We understand he hits a long ball off the tee from his days of playing back at Virginia Tech. Is that still true? No. <laughs> <laughs> and he will actually stand in a long line for a Baconator at Wendy's. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> on a more serious note, on a much more serious note, he longs to see substance abuse eradicated in our community and has long been a friend of Pulaski County as a dedicated and distinguished public servant. I want to both personally and professionally thank you for what you have meant to this county, and of course, in true fashion of local government, present you with a resolution. If I could have you stand, if uh, Mr. Bob and Mr. Guthrie would join me, help me out. Uh, Mr. Akers, who took great part in uh, drafting this as well, It is my honor to present a resolution of the Pulaski County Board of Supervisors in recognition and appreciation of 
the Honorable Judge Marcus H. Long, Jr. Whereas the County of Pulaski recognizes the Honorable Judge Marcus H. Long, Jr. for his distinguished service to the Commonwealth as a 27th District Circuit Court Judge since 2012 here in Pulaski County, Virginia. And whereas Judge Long recognized the need for a new strategy to help address our community's acute problems associated with substance abuse issues by establishing the inaugural, inaugural Drug Treatment Court Program in Pulaski County in December of 2014. And whereas Judge Long spearheaded the drug court collaborative effort among agencies comprised of our court officials, New River Valley Community Services staff, law enforcement agencies, probation officers, and county staff to form the drug court team. And whereas the drug court provides an alternative to incarceration for nonviolent offenders with substance abuse related charges based on the model set forth by the Supreme Court of Virginia. And whereas the drug court is where treatment and accountability meet justice and where multiple lives are transformed and saved through a highly successful two year plan involving intensive judicial supervision to ultimately break the cycle of addiction, crime and incarceration in Pulaski County. And whereas since the inception of Pulaski County Drug Court, there have been 15 participants to successfully graduate from the program and an average caseload of 20 active members. And whereas the Pulaski County Drug Court has received statewide recognition and accolade due to its tremendous success and began as the first program of its kind in the New River Valley. And whereas Judge Long is recognized as a strong advocate in Virginia for drug treatment courts and he has helped establish adult drug courts in Floyd and Montgomery counties. And whereas the vision of Judge Long for the drug court and his ongoing message to participants stating the best is yet to come has made a significant impact in the lives of the participants, their families, and our entire community. Now therefore be it resolved that the Pulaski County Board of Supervisors does hereby express its sincere appreciation for the commitment of the Honorable Judge Marcus H. Long Jr. and the drug court team for their role in transforming the lives of so many people here in Pulaski County. And be it further resolved, the text of this resolution is presented on behalf of the Pulaski County Board of Supervisors on this 20th day of June, 2019, in permanent testimony of its appreciation to the service of the Honorable Judge Marcus H. Long Jr. started he said I'm not introducing you today and I was very relieved because he probably knows as much about me as I know about him so <laughs> but I get the last the last crack at you before we'd like for you to speak as well um, <coughs> judge long and I also share a lot of similarities um, yeah waist size probably one in one of them <laughs> we uh, we both became judges in 2005 and went through what they kind of call baby judge school where they train us together went through a lot of those trainings together kind of where we got to know each other um, we both have a special place in our heart for Davidson North Carolina right? uh, we both love the Hokies I didn't go there but I've adopted them uh, we both have a hearing deficit right? what <laughs> In fact, that even led to the fact in, the, in almost 250 years in Virginia's history, we've only had one jury trial uh, that had a, uh, had a conviction with 11 people um, because of the hearing deficit. <laughs> That's right, it was 11 to one, it was close. Um, but the most important similarity that Judge Long and I have um, is our passion for drug courts. Um, to see this transformation from gloom to, to bloom, that's where it is. And let me tell you what, without Judge Long's efforts in Pulaski County and actually in five other drug courts, there were six altogether that he had a major hand in getting approved, uh, no other judge in the history of the state of Virginia has been 
the catalyst judge or the one who has brought forth more than one judge did two, I think, but to do six drug courts in the New River Valley. He not only has transformed Pulaski County and New River Valley, he has actually changed the climate. Uh, the attitude about drug courts, um, it has been a game changer. Um, and that is all, all of that I believe rests on, on his shoulders. Um, I am, anytime that I'm struggling with, uh, with drug court and we end up getting together and talking about it, I get so encouraged um, because he believes in what he's doing. And when he sees you all transform your lives, he just feeds him more. It, it just, it's like a baconator for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the only thing that I would, would say, um, Mr. Pritchett, is I'm not sure that that was a chance meeting. I would think that that was providential. Uh, you know, I, you, you know, certainly don't have to read the good book, but a lot of us do. And if you want encouragement, read Genesis 50. That's where God makes good from bad. And the gloom that was in our area, in all of Southwest Virginia, in the New River Valley, with, uh, with the, the drug <coughs> epidemic, uh, it, was, it was nothing but gloom. Uh, but with, um, with the drug courts, and we have drug courts in almost every county from Roanoke to the corner to the Cumberland Gap, um, and we have seen it change from just, just gloom to bloom. So you all go blossom. and. <laughs> Judge Long, on behalf of the Supreme Court, we would like to give you uh, this token of our appreciation for all of the work that you have done and will continue to do in our in our drug court program in Virginia. Thank you. Very much. Now we have one video of the guys that put together, right? You've known this man for a few years now. So uh, what kind of impact has he had on your life? Um, huge. Uh, I guess I would say second, like a second chance impact and the ability to, uh, to look at me as a human being Mm -hmm. I think he's a lot different in drug court, um, or he seems to be a lot different. Uh, he seems to be more, you know, uh, caring, more, I don't know what you'd say, um, you know, interested in us. Well, it's got to mean a lot to you. Mm hmm It does. So you've been in the program for about a year and a half, so you've had some more time to get used to Judge Long, you get to know him a little bit. Oh yeah, he's nice. Like he's, he's really not mean like people think he is. And I don't think he was mean then. I just think that Tom was mean. So yeah, he's a good person. I think that he's a great man now. I think that he really cares and has a heart for the addicts and wants to help people. I think he's a great person. He's completely different in drug court than he is if you have to go for him for a criminal offense. He's a completely different man. It freaked me out the first time he come off the stand and shook my hand. It kind of, you know, I wasn't expecting that. But, you know, it's a great thing. Tell me about your first ever interaction with Judge Long and what that was like. I was terrified. Because all the, you know, he's got a very, very powerful reputation of being a strict person, but he has his reasons why he's so strict. And people don't understand that. He's trying to save your life when he sends you to jail or whatever. But people just always want to downplay his part in anything because they send him to jail. But if it wasn't for them judges, half of us wouldn't be alive today. And people got to understand that. You know, like at, over time, you know, we would have our picnics, um, you know, and Judge Long would come, and, and it would just, you know, you could talk with him, you know, and 
yeah, it just it grew into a friendship. You know, it was more like I when I'd come in there, I I'd, did wasn't worried at all. You know, it was just I'd go in there proud to, to tell him what I'd been doing so far. You know, that's great. Yeah, and it was good. Yeah. You know, I just I didn't really want to. There was a point. I didn't want to live no more because I just seen it was useless. I was hurting my kids again, and but Judge Long seen something I guess that I didn't see because he he just kept pushing me and pushing me, and finally it clicked. Judge Long very fair, um, very fair, uh, understanding, you know, a lot more than I would have ever expected, you know. Um, yeah, I like him. I really do, and I think that makes a big difference too. You know, uh, so I mean, I really never knew him before the program, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people do, you know, and they they talk like he was pretty hard, you know. On but I mean, it is what it is. You gotta you gotta pay the piper, and I think that he has a lot more of like caring in him than he does. Like, I don't think he wants to put anybody in trouble. I don't think he wants to see anybody do bad. You know, I think he. He really genuinely cares and he wants people to do better with their lives and I think he he does the best with what he can with what he has to be able to give everybody that and to be able to get them the help that they need. Tough but caring and genuine and role model um, just really grateful to have him. My first ever interaction with Judge Long was in 1994 uh, when I had some charges of receiving stolen property and it was my first my first time ever being arrested or be, being in front of a judge and uh, he sentenced me to a month in jail and a year's probation so that was my first interaction with him how long have you known Judge Long? Uh, I've known Judge Long for uh, since 1983 when I first came back to practice. Okay. He was already here practicing with his dad in Blacksburg. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I tried cases with him as a lawyer and uh, had him tried cases with me and when he was a lawyer and I was a judge. Really? Yeah. How about that? Till he took the bench and he took the juvenile bench. Do you have any um, memorable interactions with Judge I Long? have. A bunch of memorable interactions, but uh, some of them I better not <laughs> talk about. But, uh. I, I came from a prosecutorial background and was skeptical of the concept to begin with. And it wasn't until I started hearing what was happening with Judge Long that I really developed any kind of interest in it. And so he invited me to come and I did a couple of times, and I was just blown away at what was going on. It was so different from anything I've ever seen in the judicial system that I took one look at it and thought, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. And Judge Long made it possible because he didn't run around asking for permission um, and trying to gauge the temperature. He just did it. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I love you like a papa. Um, I appreciate and will always hold you near and dear uh, to my heart as um, you know, one of those pioneers that changed my life as well as the lives of my three children. And I thank you with sincerity. Um, thank you, Judge Long, for allowing me to be a part of this program and uh, helping me out with getting my life back in order. Uh, without this program, I probably, it's, I don't know where I'd be right now, but I appreciate everything. Thank you, Judge Long, for this very good experience. Like, you helped save my life, and I really thank you. Well said. Anything else? And I won't call you buddy never again. <laughs> Judge Long, I appreciate the opportunity that you've given me in drug court 
and I really appreciate everything that you've done for me and supported me throughout this process. I know it's been a long road ahead of us, but we got it done. Thank you. Well, good luck to you. I, I hope you have fun in your retirement. Do lots of fishing. Uh, I'd like to say, Judge Long, that uh, like I, I just think that you're a really fair person, and um, I'm glad that you are the one that, that has headed this program up. I think that it was a good choice, and I wish you luck in the future, you know. So. Judge Long, uh, I thank you for all you've done with Drug Court. Um, it's been a pleasure knowing you. Uh, on a different, uh, in a different environment, so to say. Um, like I say, you've treated us very good. Uh, you've you've been a big uh, a big help in my life. So thank you, Judge Long. Thank you for believing in me when nobody else did, and to give me the opportunity to be in drug court. And uh, you're a very powerful man with your words of wisdom. And thank you for everything. Um, there's a lot of people that sure is gonna miss you. I know uh, I am. And I think Drug Court is losing a big piece, but I understand that you have uh, other stuff in life and more time you want to devote to different things. And that's great. I just wish you the best and hope everything works out. Well, um, Judge Long, I really, you know, am glad that, you know, our li lives had crossed paths, you know, whatever, what, you know, even the way it had to, you know, I'm, I don't know where I would be right now if, I, well, I'd probably be dead or still in jail if I wouldn't have came into drug court and met you and uh, felt the, the love of drug court, um, you know, I, even though it was, you know, I was sentenced to it, it was become more like a family. And, uh, you know, so it, I'm really grateful for everything that you've done for me and for everybody else, uh, you know, and I just can't thank you enough. And, and I really am grateful, you know, for everything that the drug court and you and um that is done because i i know you know that that you really cared you know i mean i could see it you know all the time you know it was you know you didn't want to have to send us to jail you wanted us to succeed more than anything and i knew that and i just want to thank you thank you for the opportunity you've really changed my life you've given me hope boy and you know i lost it and yeah you always said you were scared for me, and I think at one point I was scared for myself, but thanks for never losing that hope, and, and enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Judge Long, thank you for all your support, and thank you for all that you do for everybody. I love that you're fair but tough, and that you just keep doing what you're doing. The best is yet to come. Judge Long, I so much appreciate the silent guidance you've given me in how to be a better jurist. Mark, we appreciate all your help um, and I won't say stubbornness to get it going, but your, your desire to get it moving, not just here in Montgomery County, but throughout the 27th uh, Judicial Circuit. And without your insistence and hard work, we wouldn't be where we are today. So we do appreciate everything that you've done in that regard. And, well, thank you. I wish I hadn't said anything. I'm not really retiring. I'm just this, I'm leaving the Pulaski Drug Court. Fred Finch is I'm passing the torch to him. He's very capable, just very passionate, and you'll be in very, very good hands. I have no doubt about that. So, I, I, retirement, uh, who knows? I'm not, not leaving the drug courts, I promise, each and every one. But, you know, let's do it this way. I look to my left, and I see all y'all. I am so proud to see you. And these the plaques, which I appreciate and all that, but seeing y'all be successful is the best thing. And that's what inspires me. And each and every one of you, I wish you the best of luck in the future. And you know, the best is yet to come. And, and I, I appreciate that. 
and I can't tell you how much you've inspired me later in my career. Uh, this is something that I look forward to. I look forward to it growing. I look forward to starting others. And I've got a whole pile of napkins. I'm going to see James and Wendy's for a couple of things, too. <laughs> so we're not done yet. And the people behind me, I thank you all. These are, so, these are great people. Chip is wonderful. One thing that Chip didn't say about himself, and, I, and this is nice. You know, Chip is a lay minister. And you, we all know how important faith is in beating any disease, beating your addiction. And remember that. This is a man of faith right here. But that's very important. Keep it going. And keep in touch. And we're all here forever to help you. Okay? And I, if you need help, you need to talk to somebody. We're all here. All of us. Please. And, you know, one thing I'll, I'll say, and I've got a lot of other words that go with it, but true happiness is helping others. And that's what everyone up here does. And most of you all in this room help others. And that's true happiness. You know, getting a new car, getting a a new uh, tie or something, that's happy short term, very short term. But helping others is long term happiness. And that's what they learned to do in the drug court. And I know I've seen that happen. You know, it's great to see when people start in the drug court and, and then all of a sudden you see this switch. It just switches. And you know they got it. You know they're going to make it. Everybody I see that. Sometimes it's a short time, sometimes it's a long time, and sometimes it's no time. But most of the time it happens. And you can see the difference in each and every one of them. And, and I wish I chip it and take a picture when they come in and when they go out. But you know, uh, I, I, got, I got my mind's eye of you when you came in, including how you look, but including your attitude and all that. And when you leave, I've got all that in my mind, which I'll never forget. I do have a picture. So uh, that's, that's the good news and the bad news. But I want to recognize a few people real quickly, I know, and I certainly didn't expect all this, and I, I appreciate it. It's, um, you know, it's my job. You know, when you give something for your job, it's, it, I'm not sure you should get it, but thank you. Thank you. And, but everybody on our team deserves this. We're all one part of a team. It's one collaboration. And everybody, every word that was said up here, it, is, it goes to everybody on our team. And, and it's, it's, the collaboration is what makes our drug courts in this New River Valley wonderful. Because look, we've got everybody. We've got everybody. Police, Commonwealth. Uh, and Skip said one, uh, I mean, Chip said one thing, you know, he talked about Woodstock. Well, I was there. Skip, you were there too, weren't you? <laughs> we, you know, and now we're going again. So we've done full circle. So anyway. No, I'll let Skip it up here. But anyway, but it's coming up. I remember, I remember it well. But in any event, uh, there's several people who I want to recognize. Uh, one of them is here today. And he is the one that kind of shamed me into shaking hands after the drug court was over. But Randy Matney, he was a great start uh, to, to uh, our drug court and very integral in, in getting it off the ground. And he didn't, he didn't ask why, he didn't ask questions, he just did it. And uh, just like James, Laurie, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, we, they just did it. And, and I think that's what we, how we all got started. Mike Fleener just did it. Skip just did it. We didn't have this big session, well, should we do this, should we do that, where are we going to get the money? Well, we did none of that stuff. It's just the attitude and the passion of all of us. Um, and you know, I, I, and, you know, I want to recognize Randy for all his great help, and he's still around and still, still working, and, and he's a, he's a fine person and a great person. Rosemary Sullivan, who was James's predecessor with community services, she was very integral in getting it started along with James. He was there too, but she's not here today. But she she was very integral in getting it started. Also, I want to recognize Cynthia Dodge with the Public Defender's Office. She was very integral in getting it started in her wisdom. And, uh, she was my foil. <laughs> so, um, she, she, well, I don't know, we'd call her short-term Dodge or something, maybe. But, but we, we did have a little bit of a foil between us. But it, it was good. It's good. Our decisions are always a, a group decision, a team decision. And, and, uh, and we, we've got some uh, plans for that. And finally, I just said I'm, I'm cut out a lot of this, I think. Okay, I'm going to go back for a second. This is just, I hope not my last day with Plasky Drug Treatment Court. I hope I can come to your graduations. I definitely want to. I want to go to the picnics. It's good food. And, and, um, and seeing, seeing all the participants and all the, uh, the team is wonderful. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm passing it towards the <coughs> bench, and he'll do a great job. He's, a, he's, a, he's very passionate about it. I think our judges have gotten that, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and it's, 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 it's really helped a lot of people. In this uh, uh, New River Valley, and it, I'm sure it will help more. 
it's kind of bittersweet for me to go, but, or, but I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere, and, uh, but I know you're in good hands with Judge Finch and, and the uh, team that we have. Two people especially I recognize are the course of this drug court. Everybody's important, and I appreciate you all, all coming. I, I look all around me, and I see excellent people. Uh, Leroy, your story has inspired me so much over these years. I see when you came in, I remember when you came in the court the first time, very well. You came right over there, that corner, I was sitting right over there, and I think we had a little dispute about something. I, we, I can't remember, I do remember, but I'm not going to get right into it. <laughs> but, uh, and he looked at me and he said, you're crazy. And I said, excuse me? And he said, you're crazy. And I, I said, yeah, maybe I am, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, I look where Leroy was at that time, and where he was at the bottom of the barrel, literally. But he came back, look at what he's accomplished. He is an inspiration to me and to everyone who knows him. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, and, and he truly is helping others. And this is a guy who did not stump his toe throughout this whole procedure. He never, never got reprimanded, never got a sanction. And it just, he went through it. And I know he is a God-fearing man, and I know his faith helped him throughout this whole thing. It still is. But he, is, he talks all over the country now with his story. And you know what? I'm still crazy. So that's okay. <laughs> but, but that's okay. You've got to be a little crazy, right? So anyway. And also, uh, and, and Leroy, just thank you so much for the inspiration. Uh, it, it gave me, uh, I don't want to say, I'm a lucky man. I've always enjoyed what I do. I enjoy being a lawyer. I enjoy being a judge. And, you know, my passion for law is pretty great, and that translates into long terms or whatever they want to say, or long sentences. But it's my passion for, for the law and my passion for the drug courts. I mean, it's tremendous. I mean, I, I may uh, be not the, uh, a light sensor, but I've also got passion for, for our community. I've got passion for people who are addicted. But I'm not, I don't have passion for people who sell drugs. Second person I want to recognize is Lori Trail. She is an amazing person, as I said before. And I'm mad at you, though, because you told somebody, and this, all this happened. And these people, I know you didn't expect all this. I hope you're not bored stiff. But, uh, but it, it, it does show what a community can accomplish in, in by, through the collaboration. And she, she's just amazing. She's done so much in, in Virginia for drug courts, so much in our area. And each and every one of these people know they've touched all of us, and she's touched all of us. And anyway, just thank you. I know, but not, I don't thank you for telling somebody that I didn't mean. I just wanted to say I was going to pass the torch to Brad. Right, but and, I, and I do want to clarify, you're not retiring. I'm not Still retiring. Still County Drug Court. Yeah. But <coughs> yeah, and, you're, yeah. you're leaving us here. Yeah, and, but no, James, I'm not finished. <laughs> so, and Anthony, too, and Lori, too. Can we share I, the cell together? Uh -huh. <laughs> All three of you? No, we, we'll keep Lori. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, no, we're not doing any sales. We're just doing a couple other things. So, okay. and again, I want to thank everybody for letting me be a part of this team. Uh, it's been, it, it's just been a great experience. We still have Floyd County, but but and I love the people over there. But I love the people here in Pulaski and, and, and our team and the participants. Uh, and, and I just wish you the best. And just remember, the best is yet to come, and it is. I guarantee. You. And I hope the ones that are in drug court now, you see what you can accomplish, and you can. Look, look at you. Look at where you. Think of where you were. Think of where you are. So, Leo, you have to think a long time. <laughs> but but I do appreciate the inspiration that you provide to all of us, you know, especially. Me. So you, you didn't say you didn't like plaques, so maybe you've we You've given me so much inspiration, I don't see plaques on top of it. It says, on behalf of the Pulaski County Adult Drug Treatment Court, this award is presented to the Honorable Marcus H. Long, Jr. Judge. Paul, Paul, no. <laughs> in recognition of his vision and leadership in the establishment of adult drug treatment court programs across the New River Valley and for the impact this has had, he will continue to have on countless lives. The best is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wait a minute. That's not the best part. Uh, court's adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>
there's a reception at Al's, which is.